scripture reading for today. Uh, we're coming from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. Amen. And the word reads as follows. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Amen. Father God, we thank you for your scripture text on today, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for the visitation of your spirit. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this the opportunity to come together in worship, Heavenly Father, all in one place, Lord, and all on one accord, Heavenly Father. Whatever it is, Father, that you plan to do today in this season, Father, have your way, Heavenly Father, in the service. Have your way in our hearts. Have your way in our minds. Bind us together, Lord, with a cord that cannot be broken, which is your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. What is your message? Now, the scripture text for today is a very familiar scriptural text, okay? Everybody knows this story. When the angels appeared to the shepherds, we all know what was taking place here. But what I want you all to realize, and the thought that I want to leave with you today is, we were all employed before we even realized we had a job. How is that, you might ask? Because we have the profound opportunity to be Christ's messenger. We have the opportunity, just as the angels, to share his message with all those that we come in contact with, okay? In today's scripture reading, we find the angelic choir announcing the birth of Jesus Christ to an astonished group of shepherds. It has been the privilege and joy of Christ's followers to sing and speak of his coming since that significant night. It is the privilege of Christians today to join that angelic choir and to tell the good news with a joyful sound. It is the privilege of Christians today to join that angelic choir and tell the good news with a joyful sound. Okay? The early followers of Christ were traveling witnesses and they journeyed to tell the good news. So today we're going to examine some of the different places that they shared the good news. How were we employed before we realized we had a job? Because we all have the profound opportunity to share the good news with anyone, with everyone. And we have this opportunity to joyfully share the good news. So what is your message? If our favorite show comes on television, we'll watch it tonight. And the first thing in the morning, we're texting our friend, hey, did you see how to get away with murder last night? Did you see scandal last night? Did you see how she did this? Did you see how she did that? We'll go on Facebook and we'll make a tweet and update our status and it's referencing something that we saw. What is your message? Now, just as we anxiously share the message of our favorite television program, we should anxiously share the message that the Savior is born and he is risen and the time has now come, okay? Now, how apt are we if that's the message that we wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and best friend send us a text? I just wanted to remind you that the Savior is born. Come let us adore him. Let's pray together at about 8 o'clock. How many of us are going to joyfully respond? You got it. I'm ready. How many of us are going to walk up to the stranger when we're heading into Walmart this afternoon and just say, you know, I'm having a great day because I went to service this morning and we talked about how the angels greet the shepherd and I don't have a great singing voice, but I have the opportunity to share this great message and I want to share this message with you. How many of us would do that in the age of COVID, in the age of God knows what people are going to do when you speak to someone that you don't know? Now, some people will say, well, you know, pastor gave the opportunity for me to share God's good news. We're going to walk up, and, I, and pastor said, find five strangers today and share the good news. We're going to walk up to the person at Hardy's and say, Jesus is risen, one. We're going to go over to the gas station and say, 
God is good too. We're going to go down our street and barely roll down our window. God's been good to me. You know, but it's not joyfully sharing the message. Now, if this is the message that we are to share and you aren't joyfully sharing the message, why would anyone want to receive the message? God is good and he's been good to me. I don't think I want that God. <laughs> if that's what good to you looks like, I think I can do without it. Mm -hmm. You know, how many times I hear people say, I'm glad that I don't look like what I've been through. Right. Because we all know what we've been through. Mm -hmm. We all have stories that we don't want read out loud. We're all fighting battles that we really don't want anyone to know the intricate details all about. But God gives you the opportunity to share his good news. Yes. What is your now, some people are going to listen to your message verbally to hear what it is that you have to say. Other people are going to receive your message visually because they're going to hear what you say, but they're looking to see what you do. I had a situation just on yesterday where I really wanted to come out of character at my job. Now, I know the enemy is busy. I know these things are happening. But in the moment when the situation took place, something said, I'm going to say something. The enemy said, you better clap back. You better get these people out your face and off your back. But I thought about it. There were guests on the other side of the desk to be checked in, and there were associates that I lead standing right here next to me. As much as it hurt my stomach, I smiled and I turned my back and I kept doing what I had to do. And last night, my supervisor sent me a text and said, I saw how they tried to handle you, but I also saw how you responded. Mm -hmm. And she says, one day I desire to be a general manager. So I'm making a list right now as I go along in life of all the managers that I want to be like and all the managers that I don't want to be like. She says, and I'll remember how you handled that disrespect today. Now, I could have satisfied my flesh mm -hmm. and went off. Yeah. I would have been in all right to do so. And I really would, didn't care if it was right or if it was wrong. I could have done that. Yeah. But see, the Holy Spirit, which is a teacher, said, you're on stage. All right. They see you right. and she's looking. It might be justified, but now imagine if the supervisor would have went through the rest of her life and said, you know, Pastor Nick says he's pastor, but man, he got in the gutter like we like to do. No. Now, I'm not going to tell you it was easy. I'm not going to tell you that I felt good in the moment. But I'm going to tell you I felt better when I got her text last Amen. night. What yes. is your message? I could have gave her the message of the street and of the hood. Play with me and see what you get. Or I could have given her the message of Christ. Lead by example and with love and kindness have you drawn me. The person that said it, that's all on them. The guests that were looking, they don't really care. But this young lady's heart was print job well done. What is yes. your message? And the thing about it that we have to understand, the message wasn't shared in the pulpit. The message wasn't shared with me with a clergy collar on. The message wasn't shared with 10,000 people in one place and all on one accord. It was shared in the streets. It was shared in the workplace. Nobody talking about Jesus. Nobody thinking about Jesus. But the situation was used to give him the glory. Amen. What is Amen. your message? Now, today we're going to examine a few of the different places that we can share the message and the good news. The first place that we want, I want to look at is the fact that they shared the good news in the city of Jerusalem where Jesus was to be crucified. Now, think about it. Here they are sharing the good news and the message that the Savior is born in the place where he's going to die. Because sometimes you have to return to that hard place. Sometimes you have to go back to that difficult place. Sometimes you have to go back to that uncomfortable place. Because just because it's uncomfortable in that moment doesn't mean it's going to be uncomfortable there always. In Acts chapter 2, verses 5 through 8, it says, Now there were standing in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. 
When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazing, they asked. Aren't all those who speak in Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Because miracles and wonders are still what he does. It doesn't matter what the place is known for. It doesn't matter what's going to happen in that place. When God's hand is on it, anything can happen. So don't you worry about when he sends you back to the difficult place. Don't you worry about when he sends you to that uncomfortable person. Don't you worry about when he sends you to a place and you do not feel comfortable. If that is your Jerusalem, head back where he sent you because there is a purpose for your pain and there is a purpose in his promise. If he sent you, he will equip you for what is to take place when you are there. God-fearing people in Jerusalem from all over the world. Everyone speaks a different language. Everyone has a different opinion. Everyone has a different understanding. But suddenly, in that moment, they all heard what was familiar to them. Because if God sent you, God will equip you. Amen. Don't worry about what they call the place. Because sometimes we have to go back to the uncomfortable place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to go back to beg someone's pardon that we really don't want to do it. Sometimes there's people that are waiting on us so-called Christians to come back and apologize so they can go off on you. Sometimes you got to return to the place where everyone knows your before story and no one wants to believe your after story, but you still got to go back and proclaim his goodness. If he sent you, he will equip you. The place where he is to be crucified, they're telling the good news. Because even though we knew what would happen one day in that place, there were people that needed the message. Share the good news. Don't worry about what they're going to say about you. Don't worry about what you know they're doing, already saying behind your backs. Don't worry about what they did to the last person that came in to proclaim the good news. Share the message. Okay? Also, they shared the good news in the temple arena, which was dedicated to worship. Now, we will designate certain places for certain things. You know, this is where we go to do this. This is where we go to do that. If you go over here, you got to dress like this. If you go over here, you got to dress like that. If you're coming to my 40th birthday party, we're wearing all white. If you're coming to my 50th celebration, everybody wears gold. If you're coming to my wedding, nobody can wear red. If you're coming to my whatever event, the colors are this and this and this. We designate all these things because if it don't look this way, we don't want to accept it in this place. If it don't come together like we asked for, we don't want to part of it. But Acts 2 and 46 says, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Come together. It doesn't matter what they say the place is dedicated for. Stay on your assignment. Mm -hmm. The world can tell you, well, you know, you can't come over here and sit with us unless your skirt is this long. You know, you can't come over here and sit with us unless you got on your three-piece suit. You know, you can't come over here and sit at this table if your house ain't, you know, $4.5 million. You can't come over here and dine with us unless you can afford a $10,000 ticket. You can't come over here and sit with us unless your GPA is this or that. You can't come over here and sit with us unless you're on the football team. You can't come over here and sit with us unless you're the top cheerleader on the cheerleading squad. That's what the world says. But God says, share the message. Mm -hmm. And now, God is a God of decency and order. He's not going to send you to the library with a megaphone and tell you to blast the message all in the midst of the library. Mm -hmm. That's not God. <laughs> That's him. He's not going to send you in the funeral parlor while the family is sitting there grieving and mourning and you turn on music and start turning back to it. That's probably not. Now when God sends the message, God is so intricate with the way he sends the message, he may send you to the funeral home, but he may tell you when you get there, that lady in the corner needs a smile. That guy up front, nobody's ever given him a hug. Give him a hug and tell him that you love him. That's still sharing. 
the message. Don't get so narrow-minded on the message that we say, well, God's called me to share a message. So let me get a platform and let me get a microphone and let me get an offering pan because clearly I'm called to preach. That's not necessarily the way it may go. The message that you preach may simply be through your life living. So what we should then say is, let me always be in a place where I can hear the voice of God when he's speaking to me so that I won't miss an opportunity to share his goodness. I know they say we can't talk about Christ in the workplace. I get it. I understand. And I need my job. So what if I go in the workplace and I simply live a life that's contrary to what everyone else that's is doing? Right. Somebody's going to pull me to the side and say, do you meditate? Like, what, what is it that you do? How do you stay so calm? How you, You're glowing today. Your skin looks good. How did you sit through this meeting and not get upset? Then you share the goodness. That's right. You don't have to get a banner that goes on your door that says, I want to worship Jesus even though my boss says I can't. You don't have to do that. Let your life living do it. That's how you take him into the temple. They also shared the good news from house to house, Acts 20 and 20. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. This one's hard. We don't open our homes to strangers and sometimes we even family <laughs> anymore. But these are the works of the enemy. The pandemic came about and we all had to be cautious. We all had to be particular, but it was another distraction to push us further and further away. When was the last time we came together and just said, let's just, I'm going to come over, we're going to sit in the yard, and we're just going to commune together. We're just going to fellowship together. When was the last time you saw a car pulling in your driveway and you were like, ooh, let me turn off the TV, because I don't know who this is, and I don't want to go to the door. Times have changed, but we're getting away from these basics. But see, if we came together and we fellowship together and we suck together and we commune together, we could build together. Iron sharp as iron. We can encourage each other. You may be able to tell me, Debbie, like, you know what? You working on Hilton Head? I'm working on Hilton Head. You know, it's a better route if you go 462 because bad traffic from here to here. I didn't know that. But our communing together gave me this information. That's you know, right. you might have a daughter that's in school that's going through something. And I may be able to say, well, you know what? My child is going through this, but I found this resource, and this resource is helpful. Communing together, share this information. Then we're going to take it a step further, and you're going to say, you know, my heart is heavy and burning about this and this and this. And then I can say, you know what? I'm a little worried about this and this. Let's pray together. When two or three are together, he's always there in the midst. But we got to follow the pattern and we got to share the news. But what is your message? If Debra comes over to visit and every time she comes to visit, her message is, I don't like church and I don't like church people and I don't like this and I don't like that. How are we growing? We're not. If every time I talk to you, Miss Jeanette, it's like, oh, watch out for this. I heard they said this. Or I heard they say that. How are we growing? We got to take the correct message with us when we go. They shared the good news in the streets and in the marketplaces, Acts 5 and 15. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed now imagine that power. He had so much power that the people said, just put the sick in the street and let his shadow fall on them as he's passing by. Mm. That's power. Mm -hmm. That's faith. That's obedience. And it didn't say that, you know, Peter sent out an email to the cities to let them know he'd be there on Thursday at 12 o'clock and they should have a big pulpit for him in the center of the city and bring all the sick and shed in it. Don't forget your offering. That's not what he said. They just heard he was coming, so they put the sick in the street because Peter wasn't doing it for himself. Peter wasn't doing it to glorify him. Peter wasn't doing it so that he could poke his chest out. Peter was doing it so that everyone could be compelled and find out about the good news and the good things of of the Father. It is not about me. It is not about you. It is not about my recognition. It's not about you getting praised. It's about us sharing the message of the Father. What is your message? We also know that they, Peter, Paul, and Silas shared the message when they were confined in a prison cell. Okay? 
Acts 16 and 25 through 32. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. At <coughs> once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, do not harm yourself. We are all still here. The jailer called for lights and rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. In jail, they shared the good news. Mm -hmm. Nobody would think of someone wanting to share the good news in jail. Now, how are you going to share good news with me in jail when you're bound and in bondage just like I am? Because the news is still good despite where you find yourself when you're sharing it. Mm -hmm. Jesus still has power in the jail. The name, the name has never lost its power. The blood has never lost its power. So what he did, he took the divine opportunity to use Paul and Silas as the vessel to show them that even in the midst of your captivity, if you share the good news, you can be set free. Whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're facing, whatever it is that's telling you that you are bound, you can be Wherever it is that you lift your eyes tomorrow, wherever it is that you're returning when you leave this building, whatever situation is waiting on you to get back home so that you can face it, whatever giant it is that you left at home to come here today that told you you go to church for a little while, but you're going to come back home and I'm going to put you in the same bondage that you were in before you left, I stand here to let you know that you can be Free. Proclaim the good news. That's why it's called perfected praise. Because Paul and Silas gave the praise even though they were in the bondage. Because your praise confuses the enemy. Yes. Your enemy will say, I got them right where I want them. They ain't got no money for the bill. They ain't going to pray. They ain't got clean clothes to wear. They ain't going to church. The marriage ain't working out. They're going to hang their head low. Every, the promotion was coming, and they didn't get it. Their friends are talking about it behind their back. I got them right where I want them. But Paul and Silas showed us that in the midst of your captivity, God is still worthy of the praise. Now, what do you think would have happened if Paul and Silas' message in the jailhouse was a message of, he ain't going to do nothing till we get out. We got to sit here in bondage until they see and have mercy on us and let us out. God ain't going to do nothing, you know. He forgot about us in here. God ain't going to answer us while we're in the jailhouse. We need to be in the church house. God ain't going to move and it's just us sinners here together. God ain't going to move because we didn't pay our tithes. God ain't going to move because I had kids outside of wedlock. Yes. God ain't going to move because he knows my past. God ain't going to move because he knew what I did yesterday. That is not so. They not called on the name. They shared the good news yes. in one place yes. and on one accord and good things came about. Amen. What is your message? Amen. We're all called to yes, share. Yes, all called. Yes. Mm -hmm. Each and every one of us has been given a divine opportunity and privilege to share the message of his goodness. Mm -hmm. To share the message of his grace. You may, you say, you may say, well, Pastor, I'm shy. I don't like talking in front of people. God didn't give me a message because God knows I ain't going to talk to nobody. God gave you a life to live. Amen. And in your silence, you can let your life living speak for you. Mm -hmm. They used to sing a song that said, may the works that I have done speak for me. Mm -hmm. People are watching even when you don't think they're watching. they're watching. People are watching even when they don't tell you that they're paying attention. Everybody has the opportunity to share the good news. We sang the song this morning about the mercy tree. Even the trees have the opportunity mm -hmm. to bear the good news. All he was the carpenter's, naturally, he was the carpenter's son. He worked with wood. Can you imagine how Jesus must have felt growing up every time they made a chair and every time they made a bench and it was the same kind of wood that was going to be the tree that he hung from? Can you imagine what that must have felt like? Every, every day, here it is. The first time Joseph brought the tree home and said, oh, look at this great tree that I found. And in his mind, he's thinking, I'm going to hang from one of those one day. 
Now, some people will take that and say, oh yeah, every time we see this tree, you should hang your head low because that tree is the tree that they hung your savior from. But then there are some people with the profound insight that are going to see, no, every time I see that tree, I'm reminded how to reach the masses, Amen. men of every birth, yes. for the answer, Jesus yes. is the key. And he said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men oh. unto me. We're not the tree, but we can lift him up through our voices. Yes. We're not the tree, but we can lift him up through our testimony. We're not the tree, but we can lift him up through our life living. But even the tree had the opportunity to lift him up. Yes. so that the prophecy yes. can be fulfilled. Amen. What is your message? Mm -hmm. Stand with me. Now, despite the circumstances of our life, despite the circumstances that we face, I challenge you to find your message. Mm -hmm. And be prepared and be compelled to share your message with the dying world. The world needs your message. God took you through everything that you went through, not necessarily for punishment, but he took you through to equip you. You had to go through all the things that you went through so that when somebody else comes along and is going through it, you can sense it. You can feel it. You know, when, you, when you're in the store and you're walking past someone and you just say, ooh, they feel, I, they feel depressed. I feel like they're going through something. You don't know them, but in the country, whisper a prayer for them. It comes to you. Touch them on the back and share a smile with them and give them a hug. Because you went through your storm and your trial so that you could share the message of redemption with those that come along later. Amen. So what is your message? Don't allow the enemy to sidetrack you and you give his message versus the message that the Father has given unto you. Mm -hmm. Somebody is waiting to see proof that Jesus exists and that Jesus is risen. And that proof could be, they're not going to come to church to see it, but that proof is going to be in their interaction with each and every one of us. So what is your message? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for those that are here to bear witness, Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the equipment that we have received on today, Father. Lord, I trust you right now, Heavenly Father, that you will endow each and every one of us, Heavenly Father, with a message, Lord, for us to share and proclaim your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the situations that we have endured. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the trials and for the tribulations. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the good days and the bad days. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the privilege to share the good news with those who we come in contact with. Heavenly Father, give us the boldness necessary, Father, to proclaim this good news, Father, to each and every individual that we come in contact with, Father. Let us be able to stand flat-footed and rooted, Heavenly Father, upon the firm foundation, Heavenly Father, and declare that you are God and you change it not. Let us be able to stand flat-footed, Heavenly Father, in the face of the situation, Father, and let them know, Heavenly Father, that you are the God that sits high and looks low, Heavenly Father. Now, lead us, guys, and direct us as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.